that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. So they came in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger. When they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it wondered at the things which were told to them by the shepherds. But Mary treasured all these things, pondering them in her heart. The shepherds went back, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them.
Thank you, Nick. Praise the Lord for that. Um, I'm going to ask you to look again in your Bibles to Luke chapter 2. And uh, I really want you to focus, you know, Jamie had read the first uh, 20 verses of the, of the second chapter of Luke. And that's great, great passage, of course, of the Christmas story. But I want you to really focus on one particular verse. And that's all I'm going to spend time on in this devotion today, and it's on verse number 19. I want you to look at this. Now, before I read it, let me again review what was going on, okay? We had, uh, we had uh, the, the, the birth of Jesus. We had uh, Mary wrapping him in, in cloths and laying him in a manger, as it says, because there was no room for him in the inn. We had the shepherds. Remember that? They're, they're there, they're at night, and see an angel, and all of a sudden they see a host of angels. Angels tell them what's going on. They go down to Bethlehem. They see this baby, and they are amazed. They are, they are just blown away, and they're talking about things going on, and we see this in, in the midst of all this going on, right? You get to verse 19, and I want you to look at it. You got it there? Verse number 19, it says, But Mary treasured all these things, Pondering them in her heart. You have this childbirth. You have the, the cows milling and the sheep going back and you know, all that stuff, right? You have the, the shepherds talking and laughing and screaming and, and happiness and sounds of, of, of joy going on. And, and, but in the midst of that, a little bit of calmness and silence as Mary is taking it all in. And, and you can almost picture her there. Just taking it all in and quietly treasuring them in her heart. I heard, I heard somebody say something last week that has been echoing in my mind all week uh, since then. And this is what he said. He said, the first Christmas was Jesus' birthday. Every other year since then has been an anniversary. Isn't that true? We always say, well, it's Jesus' birthday. Well, that's true. But it really is an anniversary of his birth. And we celebrate that because it was such a, a, a huge event in, a, in a, the, the passage of time. And we, we celebrate the birth of Jesus and the anniversary of Jesus, not because of presents or decorations or, or songs or food, you know. We don't do it because of, of Christmas carols or Christmas cards or, or lights or, or or going to see, you know, the, a Christmas carol play every year, or, or, or watching It's a Wonderful Life every year. We don't, we don't celebrate Christmas because, you know, the, my, my family hates when I watch a Christmas story. How many of y'all watch a Christmas story? How many of y'all hate a Christmas story? Yeah, see, my, kid, my family just all raise their hands and just hate it, right? And, and it, it doesn't, that's not why we celebrate Christmas though, right? We don't celebrate it because it's a cultural no norm of what we do. It's not because this is America, right? Not, not because of that. We don't, we don't celebrate the anniversary of Jesus' birth for any of those reasons. We do it because it is something that, as Mary did, we should treasure it in our hearts. We should be treasuring this time in our hearts because without the birth of Jesus Christ, we would be lost. We would be stuck out in the ocean somewhere with no hope of making it back to land. To use that metaphor. Now, that moment 2,000 years ago was like no other. We know that. It, it, there, there was busyness in the town. People were going this way and that way. The, 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 the hustle and bustle, people were running to and fro. And, and, and people from hundred miles, hundreds of miles away coming to Bethlehem to that town for their, their, their particular census because of their birth city, their, their family city. And, and the town of Bethlehem was packed like never before, right? And, and while most people were able to find room maybe in a host home, Mary and Joseph could not. And so the cows and the sheep, they didn't mind, right? So they let Mary and Joseph in there. And so they were there with the cows and the sheep and, and the smells and all that. And, and, and so this very pregnant couple stayed in the, the stable with the cows and the sheep or whatever other animals might have been there. Now, it was a dark and it was a smelly and it was a noisy place. It was no place that we, in our eyes, would say, this is a great place for a king to be born, right? 
We wouldn't say that, but that was the exact right place to God at the exact right time. And this baby was born that night. That evening. In the middle of the night, this baby was born in a stable in a smelly, disgusting, dirty, gross place. You know, it's so funny. Um, when, we, uh, when we had children, and, and, and now we love it, you know, being grandparents now. But when we had children, uh, some of y'all probably experienced the same thing. That first child, you're going to sterilize everything, right? Y'all know what I'm talking about? We, we, we had sterilized plastic bottles so much we melted the bottle. We were idiots as parents, I'm going to tell you. We always, I always say we experimented on our first one, you know? And, and so, you know, we, everything was sterile and, you know, oh, no, no, you got you to gotta sterilize that. You got to take care of this. If something falls on the ground, you got to make sure you never use that again, right? Second child, third child, fourth child ran away, ran passes. It was no big deal. Comes down on the ground, you wipe it off your pants and give it back to him, right? <laughs> to us, you know, we, we, would, we would, as first parents, as brand new parents, to have a child born in a smelly, dirty stable would be so disgusting. And yet even worse than that, this baby was placed in a feeding trough called a manger after he was born. Disgusting. Now, around Jesus would come all these visitors, all this, these people coming by, these shepherds coming in from the fields that found out about this baby wrapped in cloths. Oh, it's wrapped in cloths, just like the angel said. Oh my goodness, look at what's going on here. Let me tell you about what we saw. All this, this commotion, these lowly men from the countryside telling them about what God had done. Glorifying God, it says. Yeah. Yet we see Mary... Treasuring them in her heart. Ladies and gentlemen, today it's no different. I, I was at the store today. I was at the store yesterday, and I can't believe that I would go to the store and shop. What's wrong with me, right? What am I doing here? <laughs> I know every year at Christmas Eve or the day before Christmas Eve it's going to be busy. Yet we still do it. There's hustle and bustle. There's people saying Merry Christmas and don't really mean it, right? People taking parking spots and fighting over lines and all these different weird things going on, right? We've got malls and stores that are full. We've got mail carriers going up and down the streets and UPS drivers zooming by and FedEx guys all competing to get those packages of people's homes being done quickly. We have a whole lot of activity this time of year, much like what we would have seen 2,000 years ago, maybe for a different reason. Yet for Christians... We should be acting like Mary and holding these things and treasuring it in our hearts. Not letting things distract us, not letting things push us away, but allowing these things to focus on what the reason for the season is, and that's Jesus Christ. Treasure it in your heart. Hold on to it in your heart. Focus in your heart on the Christ. Let me give you three questions in this little devotion that I want you to really focus on to help you get beyond the traditions and beyond the tradition distractions and focus on Jesus. And some of you might want to write them down. Three, three tests, three things to help you to focus on. First question you need to ask yourself is, am I celebrating traditions first and Jesus second? Am I celebrating traditions first and Jesus second. In other words, am I placing all of that stuff before focusing on Christ? If you are, you've got your order upside down. You need to focus on Christ. Do I love presents? Oh yeah. Do I love seeing the grandbabies open presents and ripping and roaring and go, whoa, yeah. But we've got to make sure that we put it in the right order. It's going to be, that's right, it's going to be Jesus first. <laughs> And then traditions. It's going to be Jesus first. And then the other stuff. Enjoy the other stuff. But make sure Jesus is over it all. I had a hard time explaining to somebody last year. Or the year before. Whatever it was. What a Christmas tree really meant. Somebody said, well, what is this? Uh, do you worship it? What is it? I said, well, it's kind of a family history. 
And if you look at our tree, we've got toys and ornaments and, and, and we got stuffed toys in our tree. We've got pictures of kids when they were little and their grandkids. We got a first anniversary, we got uh, you know, different anniversaries, times we've gone to Disney World. We got one from our, our seminary there and then ornament. It's just kind of a family history of everything. But I, that's what I explained to him. But I said it has nothing to do with the Bible and following Jesus. Now, some of you are going to try to twist things and say, oh, yeah, it does. No, it doesn't. Stop it. But enjoy it. Because really, we want to make sure we focus on Jesus first. Am I celebrating traditions first? Jesus second. Second, am I letting this time of the year, second question, be a time of worship or a time of work. A time of worship or a time of work. Now some of you ladies are saying, yeah, you don't have to cook dinner tonight, right? I get that. I get that. But let's make sure that why we do these things are just as important as doing these things. We enjoy it. We love it. It's a work of love. It's a labor of love. It's an act of worship to the Lord. When you're celebrating together and when you're taking, you're eating together and you're enjoying life together, you're doing it as an act of worship. When you come together as a family, you read scripture. Imagine that. And worshiping the Lord together. Here's the last one. The third question to help you get beyond a distraction and focusing on Jesus is, am I loving others as Christ loved me? Christmas is always a very difficult time for people. Just a few days ago, a lady that I knew for, gosh, up until 10 years ago, I was at the church that she was at. She was a mother of three children, committed suicide. Just right out and did it. I don't know what happened. I don't know how, what she felt. I don't know what the depression was. But I do know this. It can be a very lonely time for some and a difficult time for many. Our response as a church to people who are suffering, who are just having a tough time with Christmas when everybody's supposed to be happy, is love. Invite them over. Bring them over to your home. Bring them, bring them to dinner. Invite them to dinner. <laughs> Share in the joy together. Share family time together. Enjoy that time with them. And love them as Christ loved them. Don't avoid them. Don't say, well, I don't know what to say and walk away. Love on them. <laughs> care for them. Just let them know that it doesn't matter what you say, it doesn't matter, but that you love them. Love them as Christ loves you. Love those who may not love you. Jesus said, what good is it for us to love only those that love us? Don't the tax collectors do the same? Well, make sure you love those people who may not love you. That people who don't think too highly of you or that grouchy old neighbor down the street. Love them. Care for them. You focus on Jesus because he loved us, who, by the way, us, are very unlovable people. <laughs> and yet he loved us. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, to love one another, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ has forgiven you. Love each other. Now, tonight, we are celebrating the Christ. Let me ask you to do that, to focus on that, to recommit your time to celebrating Jesus first, to letting this be a time of worship, and to love others as Christ has loved you. And if you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, let me tell you this, no greater time to come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior than during Christmas. To know that, yes, God loves you. Yes, it's a fallen world, but God loves you. Yes, Jesus Christ knew that you were a sinner and yet died on the cross and made that great exchange of his righteousness, his right being right with God, and your unrighteousness not being right with God, and made that great exchange on the cross so that all who believe will not die but live forever. And if you need to receive him, come and talk to me. I'll be around afterwards. We can talk about it. We can... Explore what that means to become a Christian and to celebrate Christmas as a Christian to follow Jesus. Now I'm going to have a time of prayer with you. And we're going to have a chance to celebrate as a family the Lord's Supper. 
to celebrate and, and take it together. And in just a minute, we're going to do that. And I'll explain that in just a minute, what that means. And then we're going to light the candles together. And we're going to close out our time with style of night. And I just want to encourage you, focus on Christ. Let this be the start to continue for, what is it, 5.30, so we'll say 36 hours of nonstop Jesus. Amen? Until the end of Christmas. Father, I pray for those here. I pray for us. We're going to have a chance to take the Lord's Supper. And what we were, are going to be doing is uh, we're going to have it done a little bit different. If you have family here or you have some close friends here or you've got some neighbors around you here and you want to come and take the Lord's Supper, we're going to have you come group by group. You wait until somebody's, you know, in line. You get the next in the line. That's fine. You might take the neighbor next to you and say, hey, could I tag along with you? That's okay. That's kind of cool, right? And you get a chance to take the Lord's Supper. But let me say this. The Lord's Supper is for those who believe in Christ, who have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You don't have to be a member of this church, okay? You don't have to be a Baptist. But you do have to be a believer in Jesus Christ, which means that you have a relationship with Christ, that you follow Him. And if you have a child, maybe, that hasn't made a decision for Christ, then bring your child up here. Let your child understand what it is, but let's not give it to them yet. Let's let them understand what it means. Let me ask you if you've got your Bibles to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I'd like to read something out of there. Verse 23 says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. That the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. That's what we're going to do. We're going to proclaim Christ at Christmas. Imagine that. Now, if you have never uh, received Christ and you want to come here, we can pray with you too. We're going to have a prayer for each family. And it's okay to just hold off and take the Lord's Supper. Nobody think anything different of you. We just want to celebrate together. Let me ask, uh, I've got Jim and, and Carl. I'm going to ask Jamie to come up here. And we're going to pray together here over the elements. Father, I pray for... After we pray and after we join together, I'm going to ask you, if you haven't gotten one of these candles yet, please feel free to get one. And uh, they're in the basket there outside my foyer. And we're going to ask, I'm going to ask you to stand. Nick, great job, Nick. Praise the Lord for that. Yeah. Um, we're going to sit, sing Silent Night together as we light the candles. So please stand as we close out our service with this. Thank mm -hmm. you. 